Hi, I'm Lisa Nichols, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to work under an inert atmosphere. I'm going to exclude both oxygen and water from a flask. And you need to do this if your reactants are susceptible to oxidation or if they are water reactive. So I'm going to flame dry a flask in order to remove water that can be attached onto the surface of the glass. And then I'm going to surround the flask with nitrogen gas using a balloon and I'm gonna add my reagents via a dry syringe. I'll first get my balloon of inert gas ready, and I have a balloon attached to the barrel of a syringe. I'm gonna then later be putting a needle on the end, and before you even inflate the balloon, it's nice to dislodge the needle from the casing, because if you get these straight from the packaging, they're actually quite stuck in there. So I've prepared that, and then I'm gonna to go to the cylinder, and I'll turn it on. You'll be using either nitrogen or argon gas. And once the gas is flowing, you then connect the balloon apparatus or the balloon assembly to the hose and inflate it. And you can inflate it to roughly seven, eight inches in diameter. And then that's, that's enough. When you're done, you then turn off the gas and to pre prevent the gas from escaping from the balloon, you can give it a twist and that will lock the gas inside the balloon. You then attach that the end of the balloon to uh, the needle. And then to prevent the gas from escaping and also to protect people from getting poked by this sharp needle, you wanna put the needle into a rubber stopper. Don't hold the rubber stopper in your hand and poke the needle toward your hand. If you slip, you're gonna jab your hand. Uh, so instead put the rubber stopper on the bench top and then poke down um, with the needle and in that way you can uh, trap the gas. Next I want to get my flask ready and if we're trying to exclude water from a reaction we do have to take into account that glass is quite polar and actually has a surface coating of adsorbed water so we need to remove that. So options are you could either have your flask heated overnight in an oven uh, to boil away that water or you could flame dry it. And so I'm gonna show you how to flame dry a flask. If you'll be using a stir bar, you wanna add that and then connect your flask to the clamp attached to a ring stand. And you wanna make sure that you don't use a clamp that has any plastic pieces on it. Um, remove those because those will melt and they will probably catch on fire. Then light a burner, remove anything flammable and wave the burner at the flask. At the very beginning, you're gonna see some fog show up. That is actually the surface water that you are boiling away and it's condensing elsewhere on the flask. But keep on heating the flask and uh, moving around the burner and try to heat up all of the parts. Remember to get the back as well and just keep on heating it um, you, until you, know, you no longer see any of that fog and then go even another minute or two um, afterwards. After flame drying, that glass is gonna be screaming hot. So if you want to touch it, you should wear some thick gloves. So you can remove the flask. And the next thing we wanna do is add a rubber septum to it. So this little rubber piece is first gonna fit into the mouth of the flask. And then the top parts are gonna fold down over it. So round bottom flasks are easier to hold on to if you first put them in a cork ring. And I like to push that up towards my body and then also put one of the gloves uh, surrounding the flask so that I can use my bare hands and not touch the hot flask. It's just a little bit easier to work with. So then I will uh, fold over the rubber pieces and then I've now attached the septum to the hot flask. I'll next immediately clamp the hot flask to a ring stand. And at this point, you still have air and oxygen inside of the flask. So what you next wanna do is try to replace that with the gas that's inside of the balloon. So you'll take your nitrogen balloon and pierce the septum in the middle where there's a little circular area, and then also add a blank needle, which we call an exit needle. So what we're trying to do is use pressure from the balloon to push gas into the flask and out the exit needle in order to displace the original air that's there. This is called flushing the flask, and you wanna do that for a few minutes. Next, I'm gonna prepare my syringes, and if we're trying to exclude water, then you'll want to have previously put 
your metal needles into a hot oven. So when it's time, then you'll just take, use your gloves and grab one of these needles. If I use a small one milliliter plastic syringe, I can just attach the needle through friction. I basically just squeeze it on there. But the larger syringes, like this one, um, these are called a lure lock syringe, and those actually screw on. So what I would do is position it where I can see the numbers, and then I would take the metal needle where it's first curved upwards, and then I screw it so that I go roughly a half turn. And by doing that, I now can still see the numbers while the needle is now pointed downwards. So here I've got my needles attached. So the joint between the needle and the syringe is actually not completely airtight. And so what's nice is to wrap that with something to prevent gas from getting in. So here I'm taking a little strip of parafilm. It's this plasticky, material and I normally take a small strip and then cut it in half because I don't need very much but I can take that and stretch it around the joint and that will help make it a little more airtight and less prone to get gas inside the joint. At this point there's still actually air inside of that needle so to be completely meticulous we want to put this into a flask that has an, the inert gas already and then withdraw a portion of the nitrogen gas. You can then expunge that out into the air. And so by doing that, you're flushing the needle and trying to remove any of the residual air that was present. After flushing it twice, it's probably good. You can then put it into a rubber stopper and it is now ready to go. So now I want to use that prepared syringe to get some of this uh, air sensitive reagent. My reagent has already been uh, flushed with nitrogen. It is sitting under a balloon of nitrogen and I then put my prepared syringe into the flask. I can push the needle all the way down into the liquid and then if I pull on the plunger, I'll pull liquid into the syringe. When you first do this, it's inevitable that you're going to withdraw a small gas bubble. So to get rid of this, once you've pulled a little bit of liquid, you then push the plunger back in to push the quote air bubble back out. And then when you withdraw it again, if you do this nice and slow, you won't get a gas bubble and it'll just be liquid. So you'd pull it back to whatever volume you wanted. And then at this point, if you would just pull it straight out of the flask, that needle is gonna be full of liquid. It would contact the air and that's what we're trying to avoid. So what you then do is you put the needle into the head space of the flask and then you withdraw some gas, which I call a nitrogen buffer. So this means that now the needle is full of gas instead of liquid. You can then uh, put that needle into a rubber stopper and trap it. And now this is a nice way to uh, transport this liquid to your bench so that you can put it in your flask. Then to deliver this liquid to your flask, you're going to first remove it from the stopper, stick it through the septum, and then you first want to expunge the nitrogen buffer. So keeping the syringe inverted, you first push out that gas bubble, and then you keep on pushing on the plunger, and then you slowly deliver the liquid to the flask as well. You'll keep going until the plunger meets the end, and that will be the correct volume. What you then want to do is put that syringe into the headspace of the flask, again withdraw another nitrogen buffer, just to make sure there isn't liquid inside of the, the needle. You can then stopper this, and you can take care of cleaning the needle and syringe later. If done correctly though, you should have a small amount of residue left in the syringe. When you're ready to clean your syringe, then just bring it to a waste station and give it a series of rinses. So start with a solvent that the reagent should be soluble in, like if it was a solution of uh, in ether, then you'd wanna start with ether and rinse that out twice or so, and then follow it up with acetone and then your needle should be clean.